Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. I'm Nick, and in this video I'll be walking you through some of my processing for the Rosette Nebula. Let's check it out. So I think I've captured my last image of 2021. It was looking a little bit touch and go there for a while. I wasn't sure if I was actually going to get any more data in this calendar year. But on Christmas night, it was a Christmas miracle. Got a nice clear night with hardly any wind. I was able to get out for a nice long time. It was actually close to about eight hours that I was able to gather some data for. Working on a couple projects, a mosaic of the Sol Nebula, which I was gathering some, uh, some image on for one of the panes. And then I spent most of the night imaging the Rosette Nebula. And I recognized this might be my only chance for a few weeks to grab it, so I went ahead and went for all three of the filters, the S, the H, and the O, and was able to get about four and a half hours of integration time. So it was a great image. Uh, I was actually very happy with it, even with that limited amount of time. I'd ideally like to get maybe double that or triple that, but I want to walk you through a little bit of the processing that I went through and how I was able to get a nice, clean, but also colorful image uh, from that data. So let's check it out in PixInsight. So here's the data I was able to get. We've got the S2 in the upper left, O3 in the upper right, and then the HA in the middle here. I just love this about these astronomical objects where there's a clear difference in structure as you're able to see it in the different wavelengths of light. I think it's uh, a really cool thing. I mean, it kind of proves that, yeah, you are gathering different wavelengths of light. You're able to see different parts of this nebula in those. And then by combining them together, you're able to synthesize them and create uh, something more. It's kind of the, it, more than the sum of the parts uh, in these SHO images. So I was really excited. It's a good amount of data. It's about an hour on the O3, about an hour on the S2, and about two and a half hours on the HA. I was pretty selective there. I used subframe selector and I probably got rid of uh, probably half of the HA frames. I was really going for the ones that were uh, very crisp, that had uh, the smallest star size and uh, the most round stars as well, just to make sure I was getting a lot of nice detail from that. So I combined those in channel combination into a standard SHO and obviously a very green uh, view here, uh, but nice and bold, lots of green, lots of uh, cyan towards the center. Um, I did, of course, get rid of the magenta in the stars and then a lot of nice yellow out here along the edge. And that gave me a lot to play with as far as color masking. So kind of my, my workflow for this is I generally take away the stars uh, once the image is stretched and then I'm able to manipulate with color masking uh, and bring out some of the different colors in the object. So if you don't know about color masking, I'm not going to go into the details here, but it is a uh, extremely powerful tool in PixInsight to be able to manip manipulate just a certain color region of the image and leave everything else alone. So let me show you what I have here. So obviously a starless image, and I've kind of played around with this a little bit, trying to bring out kind of the fiery red and orange and the nice icy blue in towards the center. Now something to notice here, it's extremely noisy. All right, so if we look at some of this structure here, you can see a lot of the color noise is coming along here. When I'm processing this, I don't care about the noise. I keep it all in. I do no noise reduction on what's going to be my color information here. The reason for that is I use this luminance layer. So what this is, is the hydrogen alpha data. And I've taken away the stars and then done very careful noise reduction and uh, some sharpening, some unsharp mask uh, processes on it just to make sure it's the cleanest and uh, yeah, most highly detailed data that I can use. Now it is starless, but I have saved the stars. Those are going to come in a little bit later in the process here. So we're going to keep those stars up there. That was all done using the star net process. Now, what I'm able to do with this is because this is so, uh, so noisy, I'm able though to salvage that by doing a little bit of trickery here. We're going to use this hydrogen alpha data, which is a nice contrast on it. It's really isolating the object in the center of the frame. We're going to use that as a luminance layer to um, uh, basically allow the color information to pass through, but leave all of the noise behind. Now, the one thing you don't want to do with this is 
just go for it straight away. Uh, if you were to bring up the LRGB combo here. So if I wanted to just apply it to this really noisy image of color and apply this as a luminance layer, you can do that, but you're still going to be getting a lot of that noise coming through. Uh, the, the luminance layer doesn't solve that completely. So if we look at that structure here, yeah, that's not looking great. Let's save that as an example here. What I want to do, though, is I'm just going to clone this again. What I'm going to do is use this convolution process. And I could bring this slider up to yeah, around six or seven. And I'm going to apply that. So what this does is essentially it blurs this. So we've, got, we've made it noiseless, but also, in essence, without detail. Uh, but the color is still there. So that color information is going to kind of show through the luminance layer that we're going to add with this starless hydrogen alpha. And what that does, check this out, all of a sudden we've got a very clean, essentially uh, roughly noiseless, as noiseless as the hydrogen alpha was, but still with all that detail and all the color information preserved. So between the two, let's match the field of view here. Look at this on the left and on the right. So this is with without convolution on the right, so we've just kept all that noise in, and then with the convolution on the left. So preserving the color, but also taking away all of that noise that was inherent in the color channels. So we're not quite done here with this image. There's still some curve adjustments to be done and a little bit more dark structure enhancement and things as well. But essentially what you get when all of that is done is this view here. Now compare this to the image on the left. So this is before adding the luminance layer and then after and with a little bit more curve adjustment as well. So we've really been able to isolate the object and um, take away a little bit of the background glow, although some of that is hydrogen alpha data that's, that's shining through. But in this case, I was happy with a really high contrast, a lot of pop in the image. And uh, yeah, kind of left a few of those background details uh, out of the final image. So what do you have to do now? We don't have any stars. Some people like a starless image. I would certainly be happy to uh, print this out and maybe share it online. But what we can do if we've saved those hydrogen alpha stars, uh, we can add them into this SHO image. So the hydrogen alpha stars are going to be the tightest. They're going to be the smallest, ideally. And so what I do, it's just a pixel math process here. I add the SHO starless to the luminance stars. These are from the luminance layer. Uh, once again, extracted using the StarNet process. I'm going to create a new image, and it's going to be RGB color. So let's have that run, and it's nice and quick. Here it is. So a lot of really nice detail in there. A lot of the, uh, of course, the color was preserved. Those stars add quite a bit. Uh, I, I am going to probably go through and do a little bit of star reduction as well. And then in Photoshop, I'm able to manipulate this a little bit more. I have to flip it uh, because it is on the Rasa. It's a mirrored image. I want to flip it so it's as it actually looks uh, in space. There's no up or down in space, so it could be any orientation, kind of rotating it counterclockwise uh, or clockwise. But that mirror flip uh, it doesn't look like that from anywhere in space. So we do want to make sure that that mirror flip occurs. This is what I've got in Photoshop. Now this is with a little bit of a, a camera raw filter done, a little bit of uh, saturation enhancement, some slight color adjustment, and then some sharpening as well. This data really stood up to that uh, to uh, quite a high degree. If you zoom in on some of these details here, I'm really happy to see especially these small little specks. Of course they're actually huge in space, but in this image here, these small little specks in towards the center of, uh, of the nebula there. Uh, really showing through and uh, looking nice and sharp. Lots of great detail on this region as well. So I was very happy with, this, with how this turned out, and especially to be able to grab this data essentially in one night. I was using a little bit of hydrogen alpha data from another night, but really able to, uh, to bring this together. So overall, really happy with how this image turned out, and really happy really with how 2021 ended up being for uh, astrophotography for me. I was able to really start to use the Rasa as I wanted to, especially with the narrow band filters from Botter. And uh, 
gosh, if I can look forward to more imaging like this in 2022, uh, that's going to be pretty great. So a quick overview here. This was not in-depth. Uh, if you have questions about details and how I did any of this processing, definitely do ask in the comments. And uh, at some point, I'll try and do a full walkthrough on uh, uh, one of these images to uh, show you all the processing steps that I do. But it does take a while, so I want to make sure it's, uh, it's useful to you and also not uh, just long and... Uh, yeah, kind of stepping through things that eventually don't get into the final product. But uh, overall, I hope this was useful for you. If it was, definitely do give it a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Clear skies, happy new year, and we'll see you next time.